Wow. Look. That's insane. In this special compilation, we celebrate some of Bondi Vet's weirdest looking pets. Nina, come and have a look at this. <laughs> Gotta show you a look. From a lovable dog with an unforgettable face. It's almost as if you were designed by God going through a Picasso phase. To an adorable kitten born with a shocking deformity. But if Amari was a person, she'd be able to bend her foot right around and actually scratch the back of her calf muscle with her toes. And an Aussie icon with a bizarre condition. It's like he's got these volcanoes that have just erupted. These animals prove that beauty really is on the inside. You can do a job for 23 years and still see something that you've never seen before and that is just awesome. At Scott's Richmond practice, concerned owner Kathy is bringing in nine-year-old baby Chino. Hello. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Oh, Good to wow. see you. Oh, wow. That's baby Chino. This is baby Chino. <gasps> oh, my gosh. He's beautiful. Thank you. I think so. I love baby Chino's quirky face, but it's a face that perhaps only a mother could love. I'm shaky, yeah. haven't you? The unique little dog is a pugilier. A cross between a pug and a King Charles Cavalier Spaniel. He's such oh, a funny dog. Amazing. And around the streets of St Margaret's, she gets quite the uh, response, doesn't she? She does. She, does. she? Yeah, she, gets, uh, she gets a smile from everybody, mm. a few laughs. Oh! Thank <laughs> you, baby. But you're lovely, yeah. She you? is super lovely. And I love the fact you haven't pointed out her most distinguishing feature. <gasps> I, I was about to ask. <laughs> yes, yes, a little sideways <laughs> tongue. Totally it's not something you see every day, is it? But that's not what she's in for today, though, is oh, it? Okay. No, today it's her legs. Her yep. um, wobbly legs, yeah. Okay, let's get you in the consult room, hey, and have a chat about your legs. Hey? <laughs> yes, come on in. Down we go. Baby Chino has been a patient of mine for the last six years, ever since she came over with her mum, Kathy, and the family from Australia. She's got an incredibly memorable, beautiful face. She's got beautiful brown eyes. She's got an incredible personality. She's a really lovely dog. And was she always, how can I say this delicately, um, characterful? <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean in her appearance? Yes. Yeah. Initially, she was a very gorgeous puppy. Yeah. Everything was in the right place. Mm -hmm. But then as she grew, some of her bones seemed to start twisting, not only in her legs, but also her face. And now, it's just really recently that you've started to see that she's actually limping, is that right? Yeah, she's, she's limping a bit. She's not walking as far as she would used to or chasing dogs in the park as much. If she is running, I notice she stumbles on her front paws. They seem to sort of collapse underneath her a bit. Oh, dear. All right, well... It's it's twisting little... out more and more. Yeah, I mean, straight away you can just see they're like, they're like flippers of a seal, yes. aren't they? They're like yeah. that. Yeah. But particularly, I feel the right leg is dropping down even more, and you can see she's mm. putting a lot more weight on the left, yeah, lifting the right stage. up a little bit, aren't you? Yeah. So I'll start with that one first, if I can. Okay. So you can just see how naturally it wants to just splay out that way. Yeah. They should be standing forward like that and on the toes. Can I feel the other one now? OK. So it isn't just her face that is interestingly put together. No. Unfortunately, her limbs also are not that well designed, sadly. And what's happened is over the years, by being in the wrong shapes, yes. they've started to wear away at various joints and probably stretching various ligaments. Okay. And now I think what we're seeing is sort of critical mass. So we're going to okay. pretty much do a, a dog x-ray right. um, and look at all of these joints and just see how they're faring. Okay. And then we can work out the best plan moving forward. OK, great. Right. Yeah, that sounds good. Does that sound good? Yeah, so, no, I want to go home with Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel better that her legs are going to um, be examined under x-ray so we can find out exactly what is going on with her. Nice big cuddle with Auntie Jess. Oh, Brenda. And more importantly, whether there's anything that we can do to help her. OK. X-ray. The real difficulty with Baby Chino is that she's got four limbs which are abnormal. X-ray. So you really do need to understand each joint and take very careful steps to try and correct them because sometimes you can 
fix one, I need to make another one worse, not better. X-ray. I think that's enough X-rays for baby Chino for one day. A series of 12 X-rays show baby Chino's problems are much worse than first thought. Moving forward, it's very clear that her body is being damaged by the shape of her abnormal limbs. And as a result, there is a really big question mark as to her future because it's all about quality of life. And eventually, it might be that she doesn't have any. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Scott. Got a few pictures to show you. Great. Come on in. Thank you. So we've taken okay. x-rays of pretty much every nook and cranny of your little dog <laughs> in order to understand better what's going on. Mm -hmm. So what we actually have is two limbs. Both have different issues, okay. but both causing discomfort. Right. So that's why I think it's best that we send you to a specialist right. and he'll best advise us and then we'll work through baby Chino and her beautiful abnormalities. Okay. <laughs> Ah, here she is. Hello. Hello. Yeah, baby. Oh, she's off. Hello. She wants to go home. Hi. Hi. You look gorgeous. Yeah. You're right now. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, was it? Hmm? Kathy will take baby Chino to see orthopaedic specialist Michael Hamilton to work out the best way to fix the little dog's painful limp. Let's see if we can get your legs sorted very soon. Yeah. Come on, baby. Let's go and see Michael. See what he says about your wonky legs. Kathy and daughter Maddie are on their way to see orthopaedic specialist Michael Hamilton with nine-year-old baby Chino. Good morning, everybody. Well, how do you do? I'll shake your hands as well. <laughs> there we go. Hello, you. There you go. I like the tongue. Very good. Right. So, come on in, guys. All right. Let's have a little look. I'm hoping that Michael will be able to advise us on the best way forward for Baby Chino. The main thing that we want is to make sure that she's pain-free. Right, guys, so uh, I'm just going to have a little watch of Baby Chino wandering about. So tell me why you guys are here. Well, since she was about one and a half, her front paws have both started to twist out. Yeah. She had x-rays at that point, but it was felt that no orthopaedic yeah. input was needed. Yeah. And just in the last few months, I feel that they're twisting slightly more and she doesn't seem as comfortable. Yeah, she's certainly got bendy front legs, hasn't she? She and, uh, has. Slightly kind of bowed back legs as well. A little bit more twisted on the right-hand side. It's quite hard to actually pick a lameness in here, though. You know, I'm just kind of seeing if there's anything glaringly obvious. I mean, that, that front right leg certainly looks like it's twisted up more so than the left. Yeah. Straight away, I look at Baby Chino. She's an interesting looking dog. The tongue rolling out and the, the twisty legs at the front. But really, to get a decent look at what's going on, we need to see her at kind of second gear. So we need to take her outside. Right, let's have a look. Let's have a look. That's interesting. So she's laying on the front left leg. Yeah. If you do that once more for us, that was perfect just at the end there. Right. So the nod is the good leg right. on the front when you're looking at a front front leg lameness. Okay. So when you put down your sore leg, you throw your head back up in the air to take the weight off. Mm -hmm. And then when you put down the better leg, it looks like there's a nod. It's not necessarily yeah. a nod, it's just the weight coming back into a more normal position from an abnormal position okay. on the sore leg. Seeing her outside at a, at a faster speed, it's actually the left side. So it uh, looks to me quite deceiving. So um, yeah, it's the left leg, not the twisted right leg. So with the back legs, if you watch her very carefully, she's got quite a nice little action of the back legs, mm -hmm. but she's kind of stamping down her left leg just a little bit because she'd rather spend a bit less time weight bearing on her back right leg. So she's slightly yes. lame on her back right, mm -hmm. looking at her from this way. And then when she's come back up the hill, she's actually lame on the on the front left. So front left right. and back right leg, we need to have a real good check over. So uh, okay. let's okay. go back in because it's freezing cold. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I hadn't actually noticed a problem with her front left leg. I thought it was more a problem on the right side. So it was quite a surprise when Michael told me it was mainly the left leg that uh, is causing the issues. And hopefully that's all that he finds. If they have a sore elbow, this is a little test that we do. Mm -hmm. She's not worried about that, though. Good. So that leg, twisted as it looks, is actually mm. not that sore on clinical exam. Right, okay. so, uh, so I'm just going to turn around. Mm -hmm. And do the same on the other side. So let's just check your wrist again, first of all. Mm -hmm. OK. Right, let's just check this elbow then, right, ready? One, two, three. 
Did you? Okay. Oh. Okay. I think if you could ask her how she feels, she'd probably say that her elbow is uncomfortable from time to time, but she probably wouldn't say that it's screamingly painful. That's Willie's back legs. So she's got very bowed back legs, hasn't she? You can mm -hmm. see. She's a little bit more lame on the back right leg as well. If you just put a hand under her tummy there for me, Manny, right at the back. That's her knee cap, which is a little bit on the loose side. <laughs> OK, OK. She stretched her cruciate ligament on there probably quite a long time ago because her shin bone is actually sitting a little bit further forwards than it should be. So um, I think what we do is we address what is by far and away the worst leg, which is the front left leg okay. at the moment. And then we can kind of see the wood for the trees a little bit. Yeah. She, she, she might not need anything doing on the back legs. I mean, okay, you know, it's, it's a very individual set of circumstances, yeah. to be honest with you. So the plan is then, so she's got a sore elbow, and it's the kind of thing that we see very commonly in Labradors and Rottweilers and German Shepherd dogs. Uh, she's got pain just on the inside of her elbow. So what, we, what we'd like to do is see if we can get a camera inside that little tiny joint. It's part investigation mm -hmm. to see what's going on, and then you can often do the treatment there and then at the same time, arthroscopically keyhole surgery. OK. I see dogs with limps, and the reason they've got a limp is because something hurts. Now, how painful it might be is, you know, it's a, it's a kind of a sliding scale, but a dog with a limp has got a sore leg, and it's my job to try and fix it. Yeah, OK. I'm getting nervous now. OK. It was difficult to say goodbye to baby Chino. I could see that she was getting quite anxious, um, getting a bit shaky. Come stay with us. Right then, I'll see you shortly, right? Thank you. But uh, I'm confident in leaving her here, though, with Michael. I know that he'll do a good job, take good care of her, and uh, hopefully fix that leg. Right then, baby Chino. You ready? OK, baby Chino. Count backwards from 10. Enough. I'm just give her a little minute. Baby Chino's been lame on this leg for several months. She's not getting any better, so we're going to put a camera inside the elbow and have a look around. The procedure, known as an arthroscopy, is used to assess the health of the joint and look for any fragmentation of the bone which could be causing pain. Baby Chino is certainly one of the smallest, if not the smallest, dog that we've scoped before. So it's a really, really tight fit, and at five kilos, I mean, we're kind of, kind of pushing it a little bit to try and uh, get in there and do the procedure effectively. Assisting Michael with the surgery are nurses Megan and Louise. So the first part is, uh, so I've just popped needle in his joint and we're going to inject fluid into his joint, which distends the joint then. So hopefully I can then get this trocar in without damaging anything, so... OK. Right, lights off. So we've successfully managed to get into the joint here. So it's a very, very tight fit. Um, we're just going to have a look around now, looking for any obvious cracks in the bone or cartilage erosion. So what we're going to do next is to make a little window into the joint. So there's our... There's our scalpel blade popping into the joint. And then through that little hole that I've just made, I'm now going to pop this little blunt probe. Just here along this border, we're just gently feeling with this little probe. And what we're doing now, we're just looking in the specific region where I would expect to see little cracks, if there are any. There's a little something not quite right just in this little spot just here. Michael has spotted some cracked bone, which may be the source of baby Chino's pain so we're just going to gently knock along here and remove this little corner of bone. So let's get ourselves all lined up. OK, go for it, mate. That's it. That's it. So done. That's it. Keep going. Yeah. Harder, harder, harder. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. OK, one more little tap. Right, then. He now needs to remove the loose fragments of bone. Which look like icebergs on there, however, it's tiny. Just trying to get a hold of it. It's coming out piecemeal, which is always a little bit frustrating. Very, very soft. But this is exactly where the pain was. So I think that tiny little divot that we could see, that tiny little crack, was the source of the problem. But there's a second stage to the operation. 
based on the location of where that little, that little fragment was, is I'm actually going to cut a portion of the biceps tendon, which is responsible for, the, for, for this movement here, which is, which is what squeezes the bones together, which is certainly in part implicated in this kind of problem. So we're just going to get this in the joint if we can. We're going well so far on such a small leg. And we're just going to cut down through that tendon. Cutting that little tendon hopefully will, will decrease the force and improve the pain levels. Just stitch in here and then we are good. Not as obvious as I was expecting, but we'll wait and see if that improves things. So let's, uh, let's wake up then. Hopefully, having done these procedures, the lameness will hopefully markedly improve and hopefully resolve altogether. Right then, baby Gino. There you go, you can wake up in this nice, comfy bed. But in some cases, it doesn't, though, and we just got to prepare ourselves for that. There we go. But it, it went well. I'm, I'm pleased we actually managed to do the surgery arthroscopically, because um, it is quite a challenge in these tiny little dogs. Right, I'll see you shortly. Night, night. OK, baby Gina, let's go. Now then, should we maybe get you to walk in to see your mum? It's the morning after baby Chino's elbow operation, and the Pogalier can't wait to go home. Hey, baby Chino. Good girl. Good girl. Pleased to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting patiently is baby Chino's worried owner, Kathy. So all went well. Um, okay. We found what I thought we'd find. We found a little, a little kind of crack. Yeah. So we've removed the little corner bone and we've cut the little tendon, as okay. I thought we might. And we did it all arthroscopically, which is quite good going, I think, for yeah. a five kilo dog. So, um, so far, so good. She's actually That's walking expected. quite well. So um, hopefully, she gets better. With the painful front leg now treated. Michael expects that the stretched cruciate ligament on the back leg will have a good chance of healing without surgery. We've just got to wait and see. Sometimes it's a slow recovery, sometimes it's up and down. They're all different. So uh, what, what I would say is if she's, if she's kind of better than pre-op by two or three weeks, that's a really good sign. <laughs> there we are. Right then, you. Off you go and recuperate. And we'll see you in six weeks, OK? Uh, well, all the very best. You take care. Right, all right, my Michael. pleasure. See you then. See you, baby Chino. Okay. Bye bye now. Come on in. Hey, baby. That's it. I'm using that leg. Six weeks after her elbow procedure, baby Chino's rehabilitation is going well. So we do one leg. And Scott is calling in today to check on her progress. Well done. A couple of times a day I have to do physiotherapy with baby Chino. Stand on this one. And that's it. Oh, you're so good. Getting strong, aren't you? She seems more comfortable now on the left leg, a bit more confident to use it. So, yeah, it's hard work for us all, but well worth it. Here you go. Hey, I think this is looking Hi. very promising. Hello, gorgeous. Hey. How's she been going Hi. since the procedure with Michael? Yeah, she's been doing really well. It's a bit slow the first few weeks, but I think she's she's um, starting to prove this week. She's got a lot more energy, and uh, yeah, she seems to be doing really well, which is yeah. great. The last time I saw Baby Chino, she had a number of sore limbs and she was starting to struggle. But after going to Michael and having a procedure to clear out one of her elbows, it does seem that five weeks later, she's moving much more comfortably and she seems a much happier self again. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, do with your legs. Nice, equally yeah. weighted, and, but moving her backwards and forwards sort yeah. of forces her to put weight on each leg, which that's is great. That's right, yeah. And we make it a bit more tricky, don't we? Let's pick up this ball. Oh, wow, now you're just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> what I can see is that baby Chino is enjoying the session. She's putting in the hard yards, and so are you, mm -hmm. and getting a good result. Yeah. yeah? Because yeah. the fact of the matter is, is that your dog is uh, not put together in the most perfect fashion. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if you were designed by God going through a Picasso phase, you know, <laughs> yes. just a little on the abstract side. <laughs> yeah. But, it's a good analogy. Yeah, <laughs> but I think that, you know, she is responding well, she's mm -hmm. smart, and, you know, I think the two of you together are going to get her through. Yeah. yeah. Shall we rename you Picasso? Yeah. yeah, that's a good name. Yeah, Picasso. Hi, how are you doing? 
Well, no, I can't remember. Lots of crisps. OK, and um, what have we got here? Um, I've got Scarlett back with her little kitten. At the Bondi Clinic, Scarlett is fiercely guarding her three-day-old kittens. Hey, sweetie. So tired. Oh, little leg, huh? Owner Wendy and her family have grave concerns about one of the little girl kittens, Amari. Normally in a vet clinic, the earliest you ever see a cat is at around six or maybe even eight weeks of age. To see these little kittens so young, it's very much out of the ordinary. So, what's happened? Because these guys are, have only just been born, right? Yes, they have. Um, one was the last one that came out. Um, she's come out with a twisted leg, which I'm really concerned about. When Wendy first brings this kitten out, I look at its legs and straight away know whatever it has, it's serious. That's a very rare thing to see in a kitten, just to have that leg twisted and, and hanging like that. Essentially, if you look at this leg here, at the base, it, it bends up, which yeah. is kind of like her ankle joints. Yeah. And here, it goes the opposite way. Yeah. The clearest way of putting it is that if Amari was a person, she'd be able to bend her foot right around and actually scratch the back of her calf muscle with her toes. That's pretty scary. But she was born this way, wasn't she? Yes, that's right. Yeah. I had tears streaming down my eyes looking at it. People have told you that she should be put down. Quite a few vets around my area said they should, you should euthanise her straight away. I refuse to because I love, love the cats. Um, no, I'll do no matter what to save her. I'll do what I can. Mm. I mean, it's obviously a pretty dramatic yeah. issue that she has. In all honesty, my big concern at the moment is looking at that leg. Maybe it's just the tip of the iceberg. What I want to do is have a look over her right now and just check there are no other little problems because quite often if you have a deformity, you can have other issues there as well. We'll just have a look on the roof of her mouth just to check there are no holes there. A classic location for a genetic abnormality is a cleft palate. So it's important to look inside the mouth. It's actually pretty smooth in there. Let me just have a little listen to her chest. Thankfully, though, listening to Amari's heart, the beats sound clear and crisp. There's one thing we don't need to check, and that's her little voice box. <laughs> that is fine. Yes, that's good. It's working perfectly, isn't it? After doing a full physical examination on Amari, I'm more confident that what we're looking at isn't a genetic abnormality, but I can't be sure. The only way to be sure is with an X-ray. We'll be back, and then, um, I can work out a plan. Yep, excellent. That's what's happening, is it? Basically, every vet says that uh, she's got no hope, so I'm really hoping Dr. Chris has an answer for me and we can save Amari's life. Right. <coughs> she's going to keep on crawling away. Okay, so this doesn't look great, but it's often the best way to keep a kitten that's moving from giving us a blurry image on an x-ray. I'm sorry, Amari, this is not what you want, but yes, I've taped you down now. My real hope is that Amari's problem is purely as a result of her being in the womb and being compressed up one end and never having a chance to really stretch that leg out. X-ray. The x-ray will tell me, though, if this problem is actually the cause of a serious bone deformity. If that's the case, this issue will not be easy to fix. So you can see, this is the normal leg here, and that's the femur coming down to the tibia and fibula. But when we go to the problem leg, we go femur, tibia, fibula, but then it takes this massive deviation out to the side. We've got tendons, we've got ligaments, We've got muscles that have tightened up and twisted and, and essentially locked that leg into the wrong position. Oh, good girl. Owner Wendy is anxiously waiting to hear what Chris has discovered. It'll be heartbreaking to see a bad outcome. I'm really hoping for a good outcome. So, I've had a good look at the x-rays. So what we're dealing with is a purely soft tissue problem. So it is something that's just in the tendons, mm -hmm. in the ligaments, in the muscles. Yeah. What we're looking at is something that has probably occurred during her pregnancy. Yeah, so she's been squished up yeah. or so forth, but yeah. then you heard it's not able to stretch out. Yeah, so she's 
got essentially what we call twisted leg syndrome. Yep. It's very rare. It occurs in very few kittens, but when it does happen, thankfully, there is something you can do about it. From what I can tell in the x-rays, she's got all the parts of her leg she needs normal. to be normal. You've made my day already. <laughs> <laughs> when this kitten was born just a few days ago, everyone said, put it down. There's no reason for it to live. Yet she looked at them and said, no, I'm gonna make sure this kitten gets a chance. No, you may have saved her life. She clearly sees something in this kitten and sees some sort of hope. My job now is to try to turn that hope into a reality. Okay, chicken. Good girl. Chris is starting treatment on little Amari's badly deformed leg. So she may only be three days old, but what mm -hmm. she's going to get is a pretty intense physical workout. Kitten physio may sound a little strange, but it is exactly what Amari needs if she's going to be any chance of correcting the position of this leg. If Chris can't straighten the leg, the tiny Tonkinese kitten may never be able to walk properly. So our first goal is to get that leg straight. Mm -hmm. So if we straighten it out Pull there. it out. Yeah. OK, we let it go. At the root of this problem is the fact that the tendons that are actually meant to be loose enough to allow Amari's ankle to function normally, they're simply too tight. They're pulling that foot right back around. So we push to the point of resistance, which is mm -hmm. right there, and we just hold it there for 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Devoted owner Wendy will have to continue Amari's rigorous treatment at home. You're going to have to be a bit tough here too because she is going to scream. let out a few little screams. Yeah. Okay. But it's all for the best time. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of hard work, um, a lot of long hours, a lot of having to put up with a little poor little thing crying. But um, I know it's all going to be worth it in the end. So we're going to, in between the stretching, mm -hmm. put her into a splint. You may not be surprised to know that we don't make a lot of <laughs> kitten splints. Really? Yeah. <laughs> There's not a huge market for it. No, so it's going to be um, a makeshift type of... Homemade. While the idea of the physio is to try to loosen up those muscles and those tendons, the idea of the splints is to really lock it in position and then get the body used to that leg being in exactly that spot. It's OK, Chick. It's OK. See how she gets around. It's going to be tricky for her, but the hope is that she'll she'll actually have to move this leg through now. Yeah. That'll build up her leg strength. Yeah, okay, but that, that's a really nice start for her now. From being told 24 hours ago that this kitten shouldn't be kept alive to now, within the last 20 minutes, actually seeing real progress, it's quite a transformation. Wendy's really been rewarded for her fate in this little girl. All right, okay. big question's going to be whether mum approves. Mm, yeah, she's fine with it. Yeah. Couldn't have thought of a better outcome, hey? She's got a really good chance. Yeah. You know, as a vet, sometimes you do wonder whether once they leave the clinic and go home, whether that work will actually be truly done. But with Wendy, knowing her connection to Amari, you know it's going to happen. And she is going to have to work hard if she is going to get the results she deserves with Amari. Here we go. Okay, sweetie. Hello there. Hey, how are you doing? Been wondering how you've been going. Good. Come on through. Let's go. Come on, Isaac. Wendy and Isaac have brought their one-week-old kitten, Amari, back to the Bondi Clinic. It's been a couple of days since I've seen Amari, so I'm very keen to see just how she's coped with that splint. It's OK. It's OK. It's OK. Chicken. Come on. The unknown for me as I'm taking this splint off is how have her muscles and her tendons reacted to being put in what, for them, is an unnatural position. Yeah, the good news is that we're now more comfortable in that straight position. We've managed to correct that twist. Why don't we see if she can actually move around all by herself? Yeah. She's moving a lot better, though. She is, yeah. See, the, the will is really there. This, this foot wants to come through. The final challenge for Amari's leg is to get into that right-angled position with her feet upwards. 
That way her toes can actually grab the ground as she moves that leg forward and she might just walk like a normal cat. So just like we did a few days ago, we're going to start with just a little bit of physio just to get it comfortable. We've made really good progress in just a couple of days, but in many respects, we've had to. This is truly a race against time. We have to get her body used to this new leg position before she gets bigger, and her weight means more force is going through these legs. This time, we need something with a right angle. OK. So we're going to use a specimen container. You're going to get more creative for me. Yep. The next stage in Amari's treatment is a second splint. You'll see in a minute, mate. This time to get her paw in the correct position. Oh, I kind of understand it now. Yeah, you're getting it? Getting it. She's got a bit of a way to go mm -hmm. yet. She just has to get used to that leg position yeah. and get the strength from that. Yeah. But okay. she's already lifting it up and she's already keen to move it through. And yeah. for her now, walking should actually become easier yeah. if she can handle this new position. Yeah. She's a fighter, a big time fighter, and she will continue to fight. I suppose she beckons you a nice little warm, warm bed, hey? We go and you go there. Hey, Amari. Well, Chris won't be long. Are you going to have a look at those legs? Hey, we'll see how they're going. Wendy and her children Isaac and Imogen have brought in Amari and a couple of her siblings. Oh, what a little splint you've had on. Look if it works, hey? Little Amari is now six weeks old and it's time to see if there's any improvement in her badly twisted leg. Lots of physio, probably 20 times a day we've been doing stretches and um, with the splints and lots of screaming by her, but um, hopefully it's been all worth it. Now let's put them down. OK. We brought a few others. As Wendy and the kids are walking in with the kittens, I'm thinking, Amari is just one kitten. Why are there three? I guess it's a really good thing that I can't actually pick which is which. My challenge for Chris, well, I brought three kittens in today. They're all exactly the same colour, about the same size, and I want Chris to pick which one is Amari. So they are pretty cold there. So if you look at that, he's actually a little boy. <laughs> You're getting a little bit warmer. That's not her. That's not her. Eh? It's you. Is it you, Amari? Here you go. Really? You really. But look on those back legs. She's on my sort of girl. Look at that walking. My mind keeps on going back to that moment just a few weeks ago where I was confronted with a kitten with a badly twisted leg and not much hope of survival. That's a very rare thing to see in a kitten, just to have that leg twisted and, and hanging like that. Wow, and she's almost says. able to bend it right up yeah. on itself there. Yeah, what he said, isn't it, without crying too? She's a little powerhouse though. That, that's a, I'm actually pushing reasonably hard there. I knew from the moment I gave Wendy those instructions about what she had to do with Amari's leg that she'd find it hard and she'd find it confronting because she had to push past Amari's pain threshold. But looking at what she's done, I mean, all. She's done a remarkable job. I think you've been through enough hurdles for a lifetime, number one. So you can just enjoy the rest of your life like you're enjoying this chin scratch. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I would have been able to do this without your help. It's been absolutely tremendous, and I can't thank you enough. No worries at all. Yeah. I did my bit, but you're the one that, that you know stared down those people that said she should be put down and said, no, I'm going to give her a chance. So. Well, that's it. I'm a determined one. She was so, so cute. Like, there's no way I could do that to a cat. Yeah. Amari has really occupied a really special place in Wendy's heart. She's been so determined, so dogged, and has made sure that Amari has overcome massive obstacles to be here today. And now she's got a life with Amari to look forward to. Jinx for you. Hello, little man. Yeah. You can say hi, Jinx, if you want. Hi, Jinx. Oh, hi, Jinx. Nice. I like okay. it. I like okay. it. Look at him. Yeah, with your little 80s perm. Look at that. <laughs> eh? 
Hello, bud. He's so cute. He is so cute, but uh, actually what's in his mouth is really not very cute at all. Jinx has the most incredible mouth I think I've ever seen in a dog. It is quite extraordinary. His mouth is just something that I think I've never seen. So um, it's gonna be quite an interesting procedure today. Hey, you might let me just show you the front and you'll just be able to see. Yeah, see how, see how joyful he is about his mouth? Are you gonna let me show everyone? Give you your anesthetic and then we can have a look at your mouth because I know you're a bit shy about it. He is the definition of a shark dog. He has a whole extra set of teeth. Okay, yeah, so he'll let you see now. So look, here we go, ready? Oh wow. Look. That's insane, he looks like something out of Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, look at that. jinx. The second layer of teeth there, see look. You open that mouth and you initially are thrust into a National Geographic documentary. Those sleek grey nurse sharks that's swimming up with the teeth kind of exuding from their mouth. To see it in a dog in a concert room in Isleworth, amazing. Hey Will, do you want to have a look at this? Yeah. Have a look at this. Look. Oh. How awesome is that? That's amazing. Shark dog, Gemma. Wow. Shark dog, look. Wow, that's amazing. Look. Yeah. So it's, it's really <laughs> such a fun part of the job and it's what keeps you energised is actually you can do a job for 23 years and still see something that you've never seen before and that is just awesome. Nina, come and have a look at this. <laughs> I've got to show you, look. What's happened is that he's developed very strangely and rather than having the baby teeth, the deciduous teeth, being pushed out by the permanent teeth, his have come in behind. So then he has two layers just waiting to chomp on you. So don't baby teeth usually just drop out? They do actually. Um, normally they're pushed out by the adult teeth and then usually between six to nine months, owners of puppies see teeth littered all over the carpet floor. Oh, really? Sometimes they come in and they're like, oh my God, the tooth's one that. I go, yeah, that's, I that's what I didn't actually even realise that happens in animals. That's yeah. Amazing. Oh. To have a dog with an extra set of teeth, clearly not normal. So yeah, it must be really uncomfortable actually not having loads of extra sets of teeth in his mouth. Yeah, well, it's just that they shouldn't be there. So as a result, you get a huge amount of food being accumulated around them. Oh. Um, so it does mean sore gums and rather pongy breath, oh, doesn't it, mate? Bless him. Hey, you're too cute <laughs> to have breath like that. Food can accumulate in between the healthy permanent teeth and the temporary ones, and also the baby teeth can sometimes damage the enamel of the adult teeth. And so really it is best that they all get removed to avoid any discomfort, to avoid infection, just to make him have a perfect smile. Or maybe his mum was a grown shark, who knows? Uh, it could be. Mm. Who knows? And his dad was an 80s porn star. <laughs> right, on that note, I'm going back upstairs. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> what I'm going to do is now very carefully remove all the baby teeth. Line them up. So one of the challenges of removing teeth, particularly canines, in that they have really long roots and when you are trying to remove them, sometimes the worst case scenario can be you can break their jaw. So you do need to be very patient and you need to breathe and don't push too hard because uh, that can lead to quite a catastrophe. If you're nervous about going to the dentist, this isn't going to help because <laughs> it's pretty brutal, isn't it? Lately, we are seeing more abnormalities from birth and that goes to the question of are we overbreeding animals? Are we breeding them unethically? But why is it that we're seeing more and more of these strange abnormalities that really shouldn't happen? And that's the last one. All right, so let's have a look now. So what we have here now is a dog with all 42 permanent adult teeth that he should have and now he's missing eight baby teeth so that's a record for me at least. All right so we can wake this guy up. Perfect. That's a way to get the tooth fairy excited. Look at that. Well hey come and get it. Yeah. There you go. 
go. There we go. It's okay. Okay, all right. Oh, is he all done? Goodness, how did it go? Yeah, very well. So he had eight baby teeth, so we had to remove those, but he's otherwise fine. Yeah, do you want to have a little look? Yeah. I'll still, still let you. Oh, wow. So like oh, that, that looks a lot better. We're going to put you into bed. Do you want me to put him in the kennels? Yeah, sure. Great, go for it. Go with Auntie Catherine. There you go. Before the surgery, Jinx could definitely frighten a few people. But now his teeth are going to grow through nice and healthily. He won't have dental infections and he also won't have bad breath. So he'll find himself a lot more popular, I'm sure. Good boy. Hey Timmy, what's up? And you need me up there now? All right, I'll see you soon. All right mate, thank you, bye. Chris is responding to an SOS from Tim Faulkner, the general manager of the Australian Reptile Park. Tim's pretty good with his animals, so for him to have to call me in, you know, this has got to be serious. Hey, Timmy. Hi, mate. How are you, buddy? I'm good. Thanks for coming. That's all right. Now, yeah, where's our patient? I've called Chris to the reptile park today because one of our star koalas, Jack, he's two years old, has bumps all over his nose. We've never seen anything like it before, and it's important that Chris has a look and tells us what it is. That's the way. There we go. Jeez, it's quite dramatic. Have you ever seen it before? Not like this, no. I mean, I've seen a similar sort of thing on other animals. But never on a koala. And never that dramatic. Now I can finally have a look at Jack. The reality of his problem is quite breathtaking. Lips, eye, nose. It's like he's got these volcanoes that have just erupted. Yep. The thing for us is, is it life-threatening and is it contagious? And that's what we need to know. How many koalas have you got here? 20. Yeah. Yep, and he's the only one with it now and that's how we need to keep it. If Jack's condition is contagious, it could be devastating to a koala population. He's been housed with other koalas and it could already have spread. It's not like they're scabs. I mean, they, they don't just come off if you, if you grab hold of them. They're, they're actually firmly attached and they almost look like they're coming from from deeper within. Yeah. There's a couple of interesting things about this. I mean, the timing for yeah. me, the fact that he's just coming into sexual maturity. Yeah. Maybe it could be related to that, that change in hormones that he's currently sure. experiencing. The fact is, right now, everything's on the table in terms of what could be causing these lumps. They could be bacterial infections and over time they become fibros. Worst case scenario, it could be tumors. They've taken hold of all these parts of his body and now starting to show their signs. The only way we're going to know is by taking a biopsy. Yep. We need to actually take a sample of those cells, yep. look at them under, under the microscope, yep. and work out exactly what's happening. Okay. Koalas are already a threatened species. Their numbers are in massive decline simply because of bushfires, habitat destruction, and even chlamydia. Now, to potentially have another issue they're facing with what Jack has, it's not a good thing. Let's go. There we go. All right. Let's go get that biopsy. Right, one, two, three. Chris and Tim have arrived at the Green Cross Veterinary Clinic, five minutes from the Australian Reptile Park. Hello, how are you? How are you? Good. Jack's here for a bit of a nose job. The two-year-old koala is suffering a horrific skin disorder, which is rapidly spreading over his nose and mouth. It doesn't look any more attractive, does it? No. All right, so we're going to get some gas into him here. Vet nurse Norell is helping to anaesthetise the little native, so a tissue sample can be taken from his nose. Yeah. You go back to right. Obviously, taking a biopsy in such a, a sensitive part of his body, he does need to be asleep for this, so that's why we're using the gas and the mask, and hopefully he'll be relaxed in, in just a moment. Good man. It's OK. Man. It's all right. Being knocked out under anaesthetic, it's always a worry, because that line rings true that Native animals don't handle it as well as domestic, so 
I'm always right on edge, but have faith in the vet. Okay, so we'll just be quick here. So the moment that mask comes away, we'll get this biopsy in there, spin it a few times, and then take this lump out. Okay. Okay, it's a nice fit at that one. The key with this biopsy is to take it nice and deep, get a full sample, and that way you know the pathologist has the best chance of giving us that answer we need. The tissue sample will be sent to the lab for analysis. The results should be back within a few days. Just putting a stitch in. This is clearly something that, as far as we know, hasn't ever happened before. Yeah. So, um, hopefully the answer will be in there. It's nice in there. I reckon we're done, Narelle. Yeah. All right, can wake up, hey? Any anaesthetic has its risks, and <laughs> it's just why, in this situation, you can never relax, and, and so we're not going to take our eyes off him until he's well and truly awake. You use all sorts of little indicators to tell you when an animal is waking up. With a dog, they tend to chew. With a koala, their natural response is to grab hold of something. We'll know he's awake the moment he grabs hold of this finger here. The imaginary branch. Breathing's getting faster. Mm -hmm. Hello, mate. You all right, buddy? Hmm? Oh. There it is. <laughs> He's got Jack. He's on now. The moment Jack does that to my hand, you know, he's back. Hello, mate. You're all right. He wakes up and it's a relief. We've managed to get Jack through today, but unfortunately his battles are far from over. It is going to be a nervous wait until we get his results back. Obviously, fingers crossed that they're not tumours and they're something we can actually treat. Hello, Jackie boy. What's going on? At the Australian Reptile Park, it's been a worrying time for Tim. Finally, Jack's biopsy results are in. Unbelievable, he has acne. He's two years old, he's turning from a juvenile koala into a man, they do it at this age, and he's a pimple-faced teenager. The good news is, it's not contagious. How's that nose of yours, buddy? How's that nose? Well, it's no worse. The spotty teenager will need daily treatment. Antiseptic wash first. Stay there. Uh -uh. Thank you. I need to scrub up his nose, his lips, his eyes, and just keep it nice and clean and exfoliate a bit of that old skin. And then once it's clean and dry, apply some moisturiser. Come here, pal. There we go. That's a boy. A little bit round your mouth. That's you all done. It's such a relief. Now Jack can be like a normal teenager. And he's showing signs that he's ready to breed, and that's a good thing. He needs those bumps cleared up to look good for the ladies. There you go, mate. See you tomorrow, Jack. It was a surprise when we saw it. It looks like she's sort of seen a ghost or something. It looks really terrible. Two-year-old Ali has been brought into Sash with a frightening case of bulging eyes. I don't like the thought of any, you know, problems with blindness. We wanted to get it fixed up straight away. I, I must say, I've never seen anything quite like this. It's, no. Wow. That's unbelievable. When did this all come about? Probably a week ago. OK. And what's, just, what happened? She just started to get a little bit of white knock in the corner oh, of Oh, she's eye. looking at me so I startled. <laughs> I know. It's, it's a bit bizarre. of a shock, isn't it? <laughs> I've seen animals that have inflammation in other parts of their muscles, but I've never seen it affecting the muscles around the eyes. I know if it was one eye affected, then I wouldn't be as shocked, but yeah. the fact that both eyes are, are like that, I mean, she looks like a, a Google-eyed fish. She does. Yeah, she does. She doesn't seem to be in any pain. She seems like she can see. I really need to get an ophthalmologist to have a look at this one. Off you go. You're all right. Come on, sweetie. Look, I see another doctor. Look at 
this dog's eyes. Oh my God, you poor sweetheart. Hello, darling. Do you know what it is? No. <laughs> I'm going to go try find Kelly and see if she can tell me. I've never seen anything quite like it. What do you think of the eyes? It's a bit scary, Amazing. actually. Amazing. <laughs> Ellie's bulging eyes are the talk of the hospital. <laughs> it's fantastic. fantastic. This is actually a really interesting medical case. I've never seen anything quite like this. Miss Ellie, do you think we could take a look at these eyes of yours, yeah. huh? Fortunately for the Labrador, eye specialist Kelly Caruso isn't as shocked as the rest of the staff. She's got a nice response to the light. Well, I think the key with her is her age and her breed. And this is the immune system attacking the muscles that surround the eye, okay. inflaming them and making the eyes bulge forward in extraocular polymyositis. What these dogs typically present is non-painful, visual. They look really kind of creepy, um, but we usually can fix them and we can put her on some oral steroids and a little lubricant in these eyes and I bet she's a new dog. These little blue tablets are going to make her look a lot better within about 72 hours, oh, which is a pretty quick turnaround. She says, I will be beautiful in a few days, Mum. <laughs> I promise I'll have my beauty back. You're beautiful anyhow, aren't you? I will never forget that look of surprise on Ellie's face when she walked in the door with her eyes bulging out of her head. I'm just glad to find that they can treat it. So that was a good thing, a really big load off our mind. She'll probably get a big cuddle, big hug, maybe a treat. <laughs>